in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, the beneficent, uh, to forever who praises do. Uh, I come to y'all in peace. Peace be upon Abraham. Peace be upon Moses. Peace be upon Jesus. Peace be upon the prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Peace be upon the honorable Minister Farrakhan. Uh, these are worthy messengers of Allah. Uh, and they deserve credit. All right. I gotta, gotta say that. All right. <clears throat> Bless y'all. Y'all keep on taking y'all's time, one day at a time, little by little. Keep this in mind. Not everything is gonna be done for you at one time. All right. You should have this in your mind. I know you want stuff to work. Just like that. <laughs> it don't. You gotta take the good with the bad, my brother or sister. Because you can't have one without the other, all right? You can't have ups without downs, fouls without free throws, daytime without nighttime. You experience this every 24 hours, all right? You got 12 hours a day, and then you got 12 hours a night. Sometimes things are going to be sunny and smooth, and sometimes they are not. Uh, don't nobody like when stuff ain't right. There's <laughs> a reason for nighttime, though. I love to say this. Stars only shine at night. You are a star, my brother or sister. And, uh, and stars only shine at night. In the darkest hours of your life, you can shine ever so bright like a star in the midst of the night. If you allow the process to do what God our Father intends for it to do, God our Father wants you to draw close to him. He wants you to ask him to help you. He wants you to send he, he wants you to ask him to send Jesus Christ to help you. He wants you to, to learn how to take him at his word. Jesus Christ is a living word of God. You hear? And as you learn how to take him at his word, that's step one. That's that's the very first thing, my brother and sister. And, uh, when you understand step one, you're right there where you need to be. Take God at his word, and you're going to shine, no matter uh, whatever you got going on, as the word say. Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, down around uh, verse 14, Brother Paul said, Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Hang on to the word of life, my brothers and sisters, because that is, that's the key. That's your lifeline. All right. Before I keep on talking, all glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Allah. Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet Holy Spirit got to give credit, honor, and glory to who is due. Amen. Uh, whatever today is, it is Wednesday, August 21. It's my nephew's birthday. August 21, 5.55 uh, a.m., 5.56 a.m., 2024. The best is yet in store. I like to be up. <laughs> While most of the people snore, <laughs> if you didn't get you one of these books, you should have got you one before. It's a nice little pack called Knowledge from God Almighty, uh, Volume 1, by some dude named Devontae Farmer. <laughs> Whoever he is, nice book, nice name, <laughs> but don't no book replace the Bible, all right? I don't care what book you got. I can give you 100 books. If there is any truth to any books, they're going to point you to the Bible, <laughs> all right? They're they going to line up with the Bible. I love to read the Holy Quran. That is a divine inspired word of God. And uh, revelations from God. Mm -hmm. And it points to the Bible. The, the Bible and the Holy Quran go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. right. They line up with each other. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, you're never going to get step two without taking step one. Step one is taking God at his word. Mm -hmm. I, 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 love, I love the fact God makes his way so simple, little child can understand that. Mm -hmm. He took Abraham outside, told him, look up, come stars if you can. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed the Lord, and God credited to him his righteousness. All God our Father, all I want you to do is to believe in him and to and to take him at his word, to receive his word. That's it. All right, that's step one. The rest will come. Uh, go to Psalms 46, verse 1 say, God is our refuge and strength. I like that. What is your refuge and strength? Where do you seek refuge? Is it in the alcohol, the weed, the girl, the man? Where where do you seek refuge? Where does your strength come from? Is it in the money, your job, your career? God is our refuge. I like that. On a more personal note, God is my refuge. <laughs> but he should be y'all's too. God is our refuge and strength 
and ever-present help in trouble, is he not? Therefore, we will not, uh, we will not fear, though the earth give way. Look all around you. You don't see the earth <laughs> falling in pieces. <laughs> Just look around. <laughs> Stop going up and smoking in flames. People getting high, getting drunk. People losing their mind. Everything is coming is in chaos. <laughs> but the people who got they, who got their mind on the Lord, <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah, listen. <laughs> Uh, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters uh, roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. Uh, God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. <laughs> Stuff falling all around you. Nations falling all around you. <laughs> Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He, lift, he lifts his voice. The earth melts. <laughs> the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war seeds. <laughs> uh, to the ends of the earth, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He, he burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. That's something to know. And sometimes in the world we live in, sometimes it's time to move and get be emotional. Hey, sometimes being still is emotion in, in itself. I ain't talking about just doing nothing. Well, y'all, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's an episode on SpongeBob. I remember. I used to watch this junk with my with my little brother sometimes. But anyway, then just just in general, that junk be on. And sometimes that junk be funny. <laughs> or I was trying to act like I, I didn't watch. All right, because they be tripping sometimes. But it was an episode uh, when SpongeBob got him and Patrick got stuck in a field somewhere, and they had this magic conch thing. <laughs> the magic conch told them don't do nothing, <laughs> and they was obedient to the conch. <laughs> they they was doing something by doing nothing. <laughs> they weren't just doing nothing. Some of y'all just doing nothing. <laughs> Y'all doing nothing, but you're not waiting. You're not putting your faith and trust in the Lord. You're just doing nothing. Your mind not even set on the goodness of the Lord. If you put your faith in the Lord, and it's, it's sometimes it's a time to move, and sometimes it's a time to be still. But when you're being still, you're not doing nothing. You're looking to the Lord. Uh, he says, be still and know that I am God. Uh, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. I like that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be still and let the Lord move and let the Lord work. And he will work. But this, this ain't just a doing nothing thing. Right. See what I'm saying? All right. Actually waiting on the Lord is doing something in itself if you truly wait. <laughs> Many people just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, nah. You know I'm not scripted nor coordinate. I never am. <laughs> y'all just got to bear with me. <laughs> You're not in a rush, are you? <laughs> if you are, deuces. Uh, but if you roll with me, go to, Matthew go to Matthew 16, verse 13. It says, Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Verse 13, chapter 16, say, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And not many people get lost on this question right here. Hmm? Who do people say Jesus is? Some say he that, some say he that. Some say he the son of God. Some say he a prophet. Some say uh, <laughs> he the Messiah, this and that. That's a personal question. If you <laughs> truly to classify Jesus and just one thing is that uh, you can't really do that. <laughs> because he's much more than who he is than who you know. <laughs> but many people get lost and they get divided. <laughs> But I like this. Jesus asked, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, uh, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. His name was Simon. And Jesus said, I'm telling you, you Peter. Uh, you know, I like that. I told you, the Lord going to change your name. 
Have you got your name changed yet? You don't know who you are? Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, he said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, uh, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Mm. I like that right there. Mm. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. I like that. Jesus changed, he changed Peter's name. Uh, and told him on his church, uh, I'm going to build my, I'm going to, on this, uh, what do you say? He said, uh, and on this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell are not going to overcome it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to say no, nah, bro. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, you know, when you're dealing with the Lord, He's gonna change your name. Now I'm gonna keep on telling you all, telling you this because uh, I want y'all to capture this. Mm -hmm. all right, Jacob wrestled with God. It says Genesis 32 verse uh, 22. That night Jacob got up, took his two wise female servants, his eleven sons, and crossed the four of the Jabrook. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip <laughs> so that his hip was wrenched as he re wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for his daybreak. <laughs> but Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, <laughs> because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome Jacob said, please tell me your name. <laughs> Why you want to know my name? My name is beyond your understanding. But the man replied, mm -hmm. Why do you ask me my name? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I bet he had a smile on his face. Why you want to know my name? And then he blessed him. <laughs> then Jacob called the place Penel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Mm -hmm. You know? When you do some struggling with the Lord, he's going to change your name. But first of all, it is a struggle. He's going to make you alive. Go to Colossians chapter 3. and say, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Uh, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on earth. Set your minds on things above. Not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also uh, will appear with him in glory. Put to, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, uh, sex, which is sex outside of marriage, anything, any type of sex, uh, that's not between a man and a woman. If you're messing with yourself or looking at the internet, it's sexual immorality. All right, you sexual immorality. If you got morals, that means you you if you, a person who got morals, they right. A person who is immoral, they're wrong. You see what I'm saying? Sexual immorality. You're using sex in an improper manner. Devontae, have you ever been uh, guilty of this? What are you talking about? Uh, ain't no one down here perfect. Uh, Sexual immorality, impurity. Impurity is anything that's impure in your body. You smoking, you impure yourself. It's just like if you, if you got a clean cup of water and you put any type of dirt in it, the water is impure. So whatever you put in, into yourself, it could be food, it could be a thought, it could be it's something simple. It could be in making your body impure. Many of y'all don't even, you don't even think about this. But listen, impurity, lust, that's pretty self-explanatory. Whatever you lust in after. <laughs> if you lust in after anything that isn't of God, it's, uh, it's an evil desire. <laughs> lust. Most of y'all lust after a man or a woman. <laughs> That's not yours. And then you lust so bad, you start coveting. You want it. <laughs> you want it more than life itself. Then that's when you start coveting. <laughs> to lust is to covet. <laughs> you want something that's not yours. That's why the 10th commandment is, thou shalt not covet. 
You don't hear people talking about saying covet or using that type of language. Yes, no, but you do it every day. You want something that's not yours. You want that car. You want that house. You want that girl. You want that man. You, you, They're not yours. It's not yours, but you want it so bad that you would kill somebody for it. You're coveting. And this is something that can't no one see. This is something uh, it can show on the outside, but most people who covet this, it's, uh, they keep that within. You don't... We don't use the word covetous in 2024. We use the word hating. All right? Because that's what people are doing. They hate. They want something you got. It's called covetous. All right? Bring you up to date. <clears throat> Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly body, your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed. Many people, that's self-explanatory. You want more than what you're supposed to have, or you want more than what you've got. Greed, which is idolatry. All right? Many people are in idolatry. What is idolatry? Idolatry is, is the worship of idols. An idol is anything that takes the place of God in the person's life. Do you know that many people are in the church, and they actually think they, in their mind, they want to uh, believe the Lord and serve God, but hmm, they actually worship the idols. That's why the Lord said, come out. Hmm. You can't serve God. And you can't serve two things. All right. Hmm. Particularly, they, they don't even know they're serving two things. Hmm. They're not even trying to break away from hmm, the thing that's, that got power over them. Hmm. Most of the people in the church, they let, they let you think it's okay to come. You come to God as you are. You stay as you are. You can smoke, drink, do what you want to do. You can be you can be gay, do that. You could have all these other type of things you got going on and still come to church on Sunday. Hmm. And you wonder why ain't no change going on in your life at all. <laughs> you look good, smell good, this and that. Jesus would have called you a whitewashed tongue. <laughs> you look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy. Uh, many people <laughs> are in idolatry. They worship and stuff that they do not know. <laughs> it, it's so sad that many people want to go to church and, and in church, <laughs> and they worship and... <laughs> They think they worship God, but they really not, because their actions, their actions is defined for themselves that they, that you really not for the Lord. You see what I'm saying? But they think they are. Explain it. Uh, is give me a sec. Acts chapter seventeen, verse sixteen. It say while Paul. Acts chapter seventeen, verse sixteen, says while Paul was was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. An idol is anything that takes the place of God in the person's life. An idol could, in present day, present day 2024, there are idols all around you. When I first uh, thought about an idol, I thought about a little golden statue. That's what most people think about an idol. If you think of a little golden statue or a silver statue or some some, some type of statue, you know what I mean, that someone, that someone had made and put up. You look around, you think to yourself, I ain't got no idols around my home. I ain't got no idols around me. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> what do you idolize? Some of y'all idolize uh, the money. Some of y'all idolize y'all job, y'all car, y'all clothes. You idolize that girl, that man. You put them or her over God. Some of y'all idolize y'all dad, y'all mom, y'all brother, y'all sister. Y'all put them over God. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. This is idolatry. Ain't nothing wrong with uh, having a job, money. A career, a family, nothing wrong with these things. What's wrong is when you put them over God. <laughs> You're making an idol out of it. Many, many people make idols out of small things. <laughs> Some of y'all idolize food. That's why the Bible say uh, many people's God is their stomach. <laughs> Have you not read that? Uh, let me see, let me see. Give me a sec. Their God is their stomach. I can't think of the scripture, but it's in my mind. Their God is their stomach. Yeah. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 18, Paul said, For as I have often told you before and now tell you again with even tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God, Lord KG, is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. 
<laughs> many people's stomach, many people's God, Lord KG, is their stomach. They listen to their body, mind, body, and spirit. Your body, you ain't got no control over your body. Your body ruling over you, yes? Mm. Want to have sex all day, smoke all day, drink all day, do dumb stuff all day. Where? You, you can't even, you're not in control of your body. That's because your body controlling you. What is wrong here? Uh, you in idolatry, something you caught up in. So he reasoned, Acts chapter 17, verse 16. So he reasoned in the synagogue with, the, with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace, uh, day by day, with those who happened to be there. Uh, a group of Ep Epicurean and Stoic philosophers uh, began to debate with him. Some of the max, what is this babbler trying to say? I was remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. <laughs> they said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him, uh, brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, uh, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking and listening up, uh, to the latest ideas. Hmm. That sounds like just like today. Hmm. It says in Acts chapter 17, verse 21, all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing. Hmm. Most of them ask people, what are you doing? Nothing? Just chill? Hmm. What are you doing? Nothing? <laughs> uh, they spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listen to the latest ideas. You heard about what so and so did. You you see he got that, that new jump. You see she got that this and that. Man, where they get that from? That's all these people talk about all day. Is what what's the newest thing that happened? That's today, man. That's all people do is gossip with what they done heard, what they done what, what's the newest thing going on. That's what people doing then. Uh Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Ario uh, Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. This is many people right here. Many people are in a church, in a synagogue or a mosque. <laughs> And many people are ignorant of the very thing they are worshiping. <laughs> How in the hell is you in a place in the building? <laughs> Man, make it more clear. <laughs> Y'all so close to the building. Y'all so close to the word. <laughs> and you ignorant of the very thing you worship. <laughs> Jesus said to the people, Y'all study the scriptures diligently <laughs> uh, because you believe in them uh, is eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me. Mm. Mm. You, you, these people study. They're so close, yet they are so ignorant of the very thing they are studying. Mm. Man, that's how many people live in a church. Mm. You're in a church, but you don't really know what you're worshiping. Mm. Word. Mm. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations, speaking about Adam, uh, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of, of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and, and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, 
an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof uh, of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard this, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. But others said, we want to hear you again on the subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Di Dionys, Dionys, a member, that's a nice name, was Dionys, uh, Dionysus, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Demaris, and a number of others. All right. Many people are ignorant of the very thing that they are worshiping. Mm -hmm. I'm show them somewhere else where that line of uh, is. <laughs> sure. Go to Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 say, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you peoples of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive, in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, uh, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow, follow all the gods, Lord KG, to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place and in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting and deceptive words that are worthless. Many people just using just actions and words, man. Uh, Jesus said the same thing in Matthew uh, 15. Did he not? He said, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. He said, these people honor me with their lips. Lip service. God, you great. Jesus, you great. Holy Spirit is awesome. Woo. You know, they you know, they, they talk about God with their mouths, but their hearts. He said, these people honor me with their lips. Yeah, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachers are merely human rules. People wonder why they don't smash no change, why nothing happened. Jesus is telling you plain and clear. The people honor me with their lips. You don't really honor me. You just honor me with your mouth. You speaking good about it. Anybody can talk good about some man. But your heart far from me, what Jesus said. You worship me in vain. Jesus said, dog, talk, speaking about God the Father. Jesus is not the one being worshipped. He's making, he making a point to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that, that they worship in God in vain. <laughs> Jesus submitted to God as Father. Jesus said the people honor me with their, he, he, he quoted Isaiah, <laughs> speaking about God. <laughs> he said the people honor me with their lips. <laughs> y'all talk about God the Father, but y'all don't truly honor him. <laughs> y'all hearts far away from God the Father. <laughs> y'all worship God in vain. <laughs> y'all teach God. The teachers about God is merely human rules. <laughs> Don't do this, don't do that. Mm. That ain't nothing to benefit your life in the least low rank. Why ain't your life being benefited? Mm. If you really change your ways, many people not, man. Mm. But look, you are trusting and deceptive words that are worthless. Many people just bring in God lip service. Mm. It's worthless. You can say this all you want. You can say, I, I repent, I change, I'm sorry, mm. or this and that, or whatever. Mm. But it's worthless if you don't really change. If you keep on doing the same dumb stuff, you not you don't you 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 don't understand at least a little bit. If you keep on doing the same dumb crap you're doing, many people the title say false religion worthless. Many of y'all's religion is worthless. You ain't a religion, but you ain't man. James chapter one, religion for all the religious people. And think they religion or this and that. <laughs> oh, a lot of y'all some bull crap. Uh, or <laughs> James chapter one, uh, verse twenty six say, "Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. 
religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. <laughs> That's true religion. Most of the people religion <laughs> is worthless. <laughs> um, will you still, Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9, will you still murder and commit adultery and prejure, burn incense to Baal and follow all the gods you have not known and then come and stand before me in this house? <laughs> That's how many of y'all do in a church. <laughs> they do this and do that. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> and they think they with the Lord. <laughs> People crazy as hell. If I'm messing up this and that, I ain't going to worry, bro. Listen. People going to steal, murder, commit adultery, prejudice, burn incense to Baal, and follow all the gods, Lord KG. You have not known. And then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name, and say, we are safe. <laughs> crazy as hell. We are safe. Safe to do all these things, detestable things. <laughs> Has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. You know, God always looking. The Lord said, go now to the place of Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called to you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name. The temple that the temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your ancestors, I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your fellow Israelites, the people of Ephraim. So do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Uh, do not plead with me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? <laughs> the children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women knead the dough and make cakes to offer, and make cakes to offer to the Queen of Heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods, Lord KG, to arouse my anger. But am I the one they are provoking, declares the Lord? Are they not rather harming themselves to their own shame? Listen, man. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on man and beast, on trees of the field and on the crops of your land, and it will not be quenched. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Go ahead, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifice and eat the meat yourselves. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifice, but I gave them this command. Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you, that it may go well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. They went back with not forward. <laughs> Many people went back with not forward. <laughs> from, from the time on, <laughs> from the time your ancestors left Egypt until now, day after day, <laughs> Again and again, I sent you my servants, the prophets, but they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and did more evil than their ancestors. When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call to them, they will not answer. Therefore, say to them, this is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord, its God, or responded to correction. Truth has perished. It has vanished from their lips. Cut off your hair and throw it away. Take up a lament on the barren heights, for the Lord has rejected and abandoned this generation that is under his wrath. Mm. Sound like present day right now. <laughs> the Lord said in Zechariah, two thirds gonna perish, one third gonna be left in it. This one third, I'm gonna test and refine like silver. <laughs> they are gonna come out like gold. My brother or sister, <laughs> for y'all who make it through. <laughs> Bless you, brother or sister. You hear me? <laughs> And the only reason you're going to make it through is because, uh, because you was being obedient and you accepted his word. You know, that's the only, that's the only difference in a person's life. It ain't about what you know, but who you know. And y'all lucky son of guns that made that right choice to, to take God at his word, to accept him over everything else, over the fame, the money, and over everything else. Smartest thing you ever made, man. Smartest choice you ever made. All right. Because while the world going up in hell, you're going to have a piece of heaven. 
You see what I'm saying? Not only, not, you ain't. Jesus said, uh, uh, since you was, uh, God said, since you was trusted with little, I'm going to trust you with a whole lot. You see what I'm saying? You have a whole lot because you, because you dealt with a little bit, man. All right. All right. That's a blessing. I'm getting off in. Y'all keep on taking y'all time. Uh, I was going somewhere else, but I don't want to hit y'all with too much. And y'all keep on taking y'all time. Uh, can't think of what I was about to, I was about to say something, but it slipped my mind. <laughs> Word up. Uh, I'm going to keep on praying for y'all. Y'all keep on praying for me, too. And keep on asking God for the Holy Spirit. He's going to give it to you. It's the Holy Spirit leading you to Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus is going to lead us to be home with our Father in heaven and get up out of here one day. You dig? <laughs> Until then, man, why not? I love y'all. I'll see y'all again.